Good evening. Glad to have you uh, here this evening and uh, special prayers and blessings to all who will be participating in the deer hunting season, the gun season that begins uh, on Saturday. And we pray for your protection out there and success uh, as you uh, try and fill all of the tags you have registered for. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. In this hour, help us to see our sins and desire a fresh start with you. Help us see the shortcomings in our lives and we'll look to you for answers to our problems. Give us a new vision of what life could be like. Teach us
Our God has heard the cries of his people and has had mercy on us. He has seen our need and provided for our salvation. He has seen our hearts and given us a savior. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sin is no longer a weight that holds us down. We are free to live in victory, free from the sin of our self-deceit, free from Satan's power. Praise God for his goodness. Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastures. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, he is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading from the book of Genesis, the seventh and eighth chapters. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind and all the livestock according to their kinds and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every bird Everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The word of our Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, 
how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. I believe in God the Father. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Dear friends, I'm glad you've joined us this evening. The bow hunting season has happened, and this weekend 
the gun season begins for deer hunting. And I'm glad that you've taken some time to be nourished in the word and seek God's blessing before you head out this week. I was asked if I had any gun stories. I only have one hunting story, just one. When I was a teenager, just into my teens, my uncle, who lived in Pennsylvania, invited myself, my two younger brothers, out with him during bow hunting season. And what he did is he built a blind for us to sit in while he was up on a stand and he drew back his bow and shot at the buck. Well, dear Uncle Bob didn't have a kill shot that day. And so we tracked that buck two miles through his woods before we found it. And it was exciting to track the buck. It wasn't even bad as he field dressed the buck but what turned me off of hunting was having to haul that buck out of the woods. And I haven't been hunting since. It's good for you to be here to be nourished by God's word. I'm sure there's preparations that have been made and will be made in the last part of this week before you head out to deer camp. Perhaps there is worrying, perhaps more worrying this year than in years past. The hurricane season has been eventful. More hurricanes have struck the land than I have remembered in my lifetime. Property and life has been lost. Oh, and let's not forget the pandemic that has spread across the world and is now raging again in the United States. And many people have become worried. And to all this worrying, our Lord tells us, I tell you, not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. And as we look toward the future, there are many things that confront our safety and security. And so we take precautions. I see a few items out in the congregation this evening that are the proper color. The color for this weekend, blaze orange. It's only prudent that you take precautions and having this color so others will recognize you. And I'm certain you'll have multiple layers of clothing to put on and take off as the weather changes. And I'm sure that the food has been prepared or will be prepared to take out to deer camp. Every year, precautions are taken by people Annually, my wife and I meet with our financial planner to go over our, primarily our life insurance to make sure that the family is cared for if a tragedy occurs and to make sure we're not putting too many dollars into life insurance. And while we take precautions and make preparations, there's always a danger lurking nearby. And that danger is to begin to worry. And sometimes in taking precautions and making preparations, we give ourselves over to worry. And what we often don't realize is that in giving ourselves over to worry, there's an opportunity for the devil to take hold of our lives and cause us to be separated from God and from our Savior, Jesus. Worrying becomes a tool for the devil to use. Yet our Lord does not leave us alone in this world. He doesn't leave us to fend for ourselves against the attacks of the devil. Our Lord encourages us. Jesus, God's Son, came into the world for you and for me.
and he came to meet our biggest needs. And one of our biggest needs has and still continues to be the certainty of salvation. And God provides that for you and me in Christ Jesus. And Jesus directs us toward these thoughts. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Jesus directs us to a full life, life with God. And we know that the full life is life with God in eternity, but most of the time, such thoughts are spiritualized out of existence. Spiritualized to the point that full life follows earthly death. But we forget about the blessings God gives us today. Here in Wood County, we have a glimpse of two different worlds, manufacturing and agriculture. And we know we need both of these for our welfare. Yet when talking to people, and it doesn't matter if the people are in manufacturing, healthcare, agriculture, management, labor, there's always a single worry that plagues them. How can I make ends meet and take care of my family? It's another way of saying I'm worried. Our Lord gives us two images to consider, the raven and the lily of the field. First, the ravens. They don't do all the things necessary for food. They don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't store food in a refrigerator, yet God takes care of them. I'm reminded of the ravens every time I drive back and forth from Sheboygan County to Wood County because it's not the ravens I see, it's a different black bird that I see, a very large one, usually by the side of the road, as it's pecking at some roadkill. And what amazes me is they don't seem to worry. They're there eating the food that God has provided for them, and they don't even worry as I'm traveling at something under 80 miles an hour. And as I approach, they scatter. And then as I look in the rearview mirror, they come back to their feast. They don't worry. Second, the lilies of the field. Lilies don't do all the things necessary. Lilies don't harvest fiber, they don't spin thread, they don't weave cloth. And yet our Lord tells us that even Solomon, King Solomon, in all his glory was not clothed as fine as one of the lilies of the field. And if God makes the flowers of the field beautiful today and takes care of them, won't he take care of us? And in the end, Jesus makes a revelation to you and me. The revelation is that God knows what we need, so we don't need to worry. He clothes the grass of the field, and he clothes us. And he provides food and drink for the animals out in the wild. And he promises to take care of us, so we don't need to worry. And so we seek his kingdom and all these things will be added to us. And it's a revelation from Jesus for our benefit. The things needed in this world, the things needed for our life in this world, come from God. And once we realize this in both the mind and the heart, worrying ceases to be something that is common in our lives. In the 16th century, there was a pastor named Martin Luther, and to call Luther a worrywart in his early life is not too strong of an accusation. The abbot of his monastery was Johann von Stapitz. And there's a little story that goes on that the reason he was Johann von Stapitz 
is that every time Luther came into confession, he would be in there for a very long time. Not an hour, but two hours or more. And finally, Johann would say, Martin, stop it. Luther was worried about a great many things and about his standing before God. And his father confessor, Johann von Stoppitz, sent him to Wittenberg to become a doctor of the scriptures, to go to the source to find comfort and to find the friendly face of God. Earlier, we confessed before God and one another that we don't have a need to worry. And we also confessed who God is, the maker of heaven and earth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And Martin Luther teaches us what does this mean. I believe that God has made me and all creatures. He's given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. And so here in Wisconsin, as we have many people preparing to leave their day-to-day -day lives, such as they are in 2020, and go off into the woods, preparing and being prepared. We pray for God's blessing on them, knowing that God will offer his protection. We ask God to guard and protect all who go into the woods, from dangers of stray bullets flying around, that injury and death not occur, that the Lord give a successful harvest this year of the deer, that the deer that are harvested are healthy and able to be consumed, and that the hides are able to be used, and that those who go out on the hunt enjoy God's creation because God has given it to us and enjoy their time away. And that they also have the opportunity to thank God. Thank God whether they get a doe or a buck or don't. Thank God for the camaraderie of fellow hunters and thank God that he has given us this good creation and the responsibility to be stewards of this creation. For all this, we gather this evening and ask God's blessings. And not only for the hunt, but also for our lives. A great many people are worried about the increase in incidents of COVID across our nation. And we ask for God's guidance and blessing. Guidance and blessing so that we can serve one another, protect one another to the best of our ability, and not allow worry to take over our lives. But knowing that God will protect us, and that even if the protection does not mean longer life here on earth, that we are protected because our Lord Jesus has come to protect us from all the schemes of the devil and to give us lives for eternity in his presence where we see our Lord Jesus and the friendly face of God in the face of Christ. So as we leave tonight, cast all your worry aside knowing that God has provided everything that is necessary for today, tomorrow, and all eternity.
Amen. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for this time of hunting away from our daily work and routine. We thank you for the time to spend with our families and our hunting partners. We ask you to make us alert to gun safety and protect us from stray bullets as well as auto collisions. Grant that, these, that the days of this year's hunt may refresh us in body and mind so that we may return reinvigorated because we took time away in your creation and with friends that you have given us. We ask you to continue your creative work, especially giving us wisdom to be stewards of your creation. Cause your wisdom to flow across hunters and government officials as we seek how you would have us balance your creation. We thank you for this time of the year that was made for hunting deer. It has been a long wait, this we know, but on opening day, we'll be ready to go. Keep us in your watchful care. Keep us safe from alarm. Lord, from all these things and all other things, hear our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.